Alright, so this is uh, part B for uh, Linear Algebra 2.3. Um, yeah, so finally we get to do what uh, 2.3 has been, or the, the main story of uh, 2.3, Kramer's Rule. I don't know if Kramer's Rule is something that the Europeans specifically prefer as opposed to the uh, Jordan Gaussian, uh, Gaussian elimination is preferred in North America. I, I don't know if that's actually true. Uh, that's what our prof said, but I don't know. Potato, uh, I said tomato, tomato. I guess some will be more useful than others. But anyway, uh, so let's get to Kramer's rule. So we're gonna start with number twenty-four, and I'm gonna introduce the rule and show you the magical thing that I've done. So again, so uh, so if I have this question, so I have this, and basically the what is asking for is tell me what the x one and x two value. Is. Well, what I could do, I mean, in theory, is just, you know, so uh, if I were to do a, a typical elimination, then I would just uh, do 7, negative 2, 3, 3, uh, 1, 5, something like that, right? And I'll be just going through the regular elimination, right? Uh, it, it's probably not, uh, it might look pretty or it may not look pretty but I have to you know get the second row and you know eliminate the leading coefficient and stuff like that so you know we should we should be very comfortable with that already so uh, the point though is that there's another way of going uh, about this problem and that's what Kramer rule is about so uh, Kramer's rule what we first do is we um, this is the first thing you should be doing a a1 a2 now what do those mean right so those are like mini determinants sort of like Remember when we were calculating minors? Sort of like that. Um, basically, um, because uh, the, the matrix dimension is 2 by 2, right? If we ignore the constants, right? So, so if that was the case, then, you know, we uh, it's a 7, negative 2, 3, 1. Now, this is where it gets interesting, right? For Kramer's rule, if for A1, basically it just means whatever the constant column, the last column you had, right? That is going to replace column 1. So this is going to look like 3, 5 because that's what column looks like, right? And then you just go about your business like you always were, right? Negative 2 and 1. It should put it in there, right? If it's a 2, the constant column is going to replace the second column. So the first column, as you were, right? 7, 3. But the second column is now going to be replaced with the constant column. So that's the trick you need to know. Uh, you need to remember. Uh, it could be 3 by 3 uh, oh actually we're gonna do a matrix uh, that has a 3 by 3 size so you will uh, go over uh, we'll go over when that happens as well but that essentially that's the idea right so once we have these now I didn't do it but I advise that you calculate the determinant for each right away so that you don't have to do what I did once you calculate the determinant you can just plug it in so to speak but now uh, the, basically once you have done all that you're gonna look for x1 and x2 right these will have to match. So if it's 3 by 3, it should be 1, 2, and 3, right? But in this case, there's only 2. Which makes sense, right? Because there's only 1, 2 solutions, right? Unknowns, uh, unknowns that needs solutions. So, uh, oh yeah, uh, it looks weird, but it, there's, whatever a method you prefer to memorize, just memorize it somehow. But basically, x1, right, equals to uh, determine x1 over delta x, right? So delta A, right? So the original determinant always goes to the bottom and the new one is going to be determinant of whatever it is, right? So X1 determine A1, X2 determine A2 and so forth, right? So you do that, you do a calculation, it turned out to be 1 for me, 2 for me. So therefore, uh, vector X where X1 and X2 will have a solution of 1, 2. That's all you really have to write, right? Yeah, so that's how there is. Now the question though specifically is No, no, never mind. I thought we had to find the inverse or something like that, but no, don't need to worry about that at all. So, that's 24. We'll try 25, where it's exactly the same thing as this, but it's got 3 by 3 uh, so, uh, dimension. So. Alright, so this is a uh, part. Uh, so, so, no, I already said part. Okay, so this is question 25. Uh, just be careful. Sometimes I have a habit of making this equ equation AX, it is not. Technically speaking, what you see here is a x vector, right? 
Now, is that the right way to say it? No. Now, you know what? Yeah. But why I'm fixing this? Follow through. Okay. I don't. I'm not gonna labor it. Technically, all we're doing is a x equals b, right? So a is gonna be that the thing. Four, five, zero, eleven, one, two. Uh, one five just so that we have a clear idea right and x is going to be the vector where it's going to be x one oh no no there'll be three of them right so that's going to be x one x two x three equals to these constant two three one that's what it really means but nonetheless uh Kramer's rule still follows the same way so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna. So I sort of skipped ahead. I looked at the solution. Ah, that's a better way. Rather than putting a one, a a one, a two, a three. Like we don't really need that, right? Because ultimately, what are we looking for? We're trying to do uh, divide the two determinants. So I thought I'll just calculate the determinants on the get go. So uh, a is gonna be this thing, right? Uh, so it's gonna be four five. Ba, 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 ba. So you get that determinant. Uh, I shouldn't have to explain the determinants anymore, right? Because we should be like, you know, pros at this, right? At this point, right? So uh, that's uh, what I have. Unfortunately, um, hopefully you, you know, screenshot this or, you know, memorize it, just rewind your video back. Because that's not the, this is not the end. I just found the determinants. Now I have to use these determinants to find out x1, x2, x3, right? Which makes sense because the dimension is uh, 3 by 3. Uh, and also it says it right there. But no, anyways. So, we're going to use these values to calculate our unknown solutions. Okay, so 33. I actually like this question. It tests you a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, formulas that you should be familiar with. So, this is a hypothetical situation. So, the delta uh, A, where A is this, right? So, there, so not, why am I keep saying delta? The determinant of A is going to equal to negative 7, right? So, this is... If for people who are not used to this just yet, that just is, that's what it means, right? That's A determinant, oh, yeah, it will be a flat line, right? But anyways, so because of that, so, basically now it's asking what delta 3A is. If you remember, I think that was on, I think that was on question, uh, yeah, it's the first section, right? So identify delta K A equals to K and delta A. So that those were the question one, two, three, four that we were working on. So, you know, so just follow the formula, right? So K is gonna be uh, in this case K is gonna be three. The N is the size of the matrix which happens to be a three. So three to three, delta A we already know they gave it to us. Done, right? Delta A minus, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, I did read about this in, when I was reading the textbook, but yeah, this is the same thing as that, right? I think I mentioned it, but anyways, yeah. But now you know, if you're not sure, right? So you have that, and that's that simple. Delta 2 A to the power of negative 1, so just be careful between these two differences, right? Uh, so we the, the inverse only applies to A, not 2, right? Because it's not in under brackets, right? So that means I'm just going to pretend that I'm doing the same thing as what I've done here, right? Kn, and then I'm supposed to put the a, but a is the determinant. So it's going to be a combination of this guy and this guy, right? So you have that, that, right? And then, yeah. So there you go, yeah. This one is a little different because it's 2a to the power of negative 1, right? So inverse for both sides, right? So 1 over delta 2a because you're doing both, and then plug in like that. Now, I wonder if, I don't think that will work. No, no, no. You can't, I don't think you can't do this. Because it's inside the determinant, right? So I don't think you can do, oops, what am I doing? Oh, no, you guys can't see. So, I, what, okay, what I mean is, I don't think you can do this. Okay. These are not the same thing. Now, if there was no determinant, yes, it will be the same thing, but it's not. It's inside the determinant, so it's a little more tricky because this rule, the rules work differently inside a determinant expression. So, um, yeah. I mean, no, it, it would work, but you have to be careful. It's not one. 
it's not really one over two, right? You have to be careful. So some people might say, hey, it doesn't just look like this, right? Two goes to the bottom and A inverse goes, becomes de the determined A, right? But it will be outside, right? This should be inside, right? So that two becomes two to the power of three rather than just staying as a two, right? So that's the idea here. And uh, we, is that it? No, no, no. We also have to do E as well. <sighs> okay, here we go. Okay, so last one. Uh, I really like this question. This is uh, awesome. Uh, so basically I looked at that, right? And it's like, whoa, that looks weird. But hey, wait a minute. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, right? So it seems like there was a very specific Alright, so I'm actually really excited about this question, but anyways, so basically we have to find the determinant of this. And I was a little puzzled, okay, where do you go from here? Like, it just looks too different. Wait, but wait a minute, A, B, C, G, H, I, D, E, F. These are all in order. So, but it's still not 100% sure, so I'm just going to start from the beginning, that's what I did. So, I have to start from here. These are way too organized to be coincidental. So then I was like, how do I get A, B, A, D, like all this to become A, B, C? And the only way I could think of is, wait a minute, yes, transpose on, right? So if I did that, um, so I got A, B, C, so I got all this. Not quite same as this, but after I uh, did the uh, transpose on, I was thinking, wait a minute, um, isn't this the same thing as this, but just flipped, right? Second and third column switched. When we do transposons, determinant stays the same, right? We already discussed that. Um, but uh, this one, if you switch the columns, right? That is number two for the theorem we talked about, right? The determinant becomes negative. So if I do that and I get this, so therefore it's going to be just whatever that negative determinant of seven is going to become. Or was it? Hold on a sec. Was that. Um, Where'd you go? Uh, oh, never mind. Yeah, it was it. The original determinant was negative seven, so that's gonna become seven. Okay, there we go. Well, the rest of the question should be relatively similar, but I really like this one. So please uh, train yourself to go through this over and over if you're not sure. But uh, I will proceed and go to the next question. This is uh, question thirty-four. Uh, again, similar idea, so I'll just, uh, just jump right into it. This may look a little confusing, but it's the same principle, right? So, the uh, determinant of A is negative 2, and the dimension is 4 by 4, size is 4 by 4, right? So, determinant, negative A, uh, okay, so that's just negative 1 times A, right? So, negative 1 is going to be K, right? So, we did this before, right? Negative 1 to the power of 4, because size is 4, times the determinant, you, you get that. B, determinant A inverse, right? So that's the same thing as 1 over del determinant A is just 1 over negative 2. Simple stuff. Determinant uh, 2 to the power of tr uh, 2, 2 times A transpose on. As we know, uh, I don't know if this is the right way to write it, but basically, determ maybe you should write something extra just to be safe. Just say, determinant A the same thing as determinant A transpose on, right? We talked about that reason, right? That's why one many of our rows is call, uh, yeah, uh, columns and uh, rows are switched. But when it comes to determinant, we don't really care about that. So that's that. So because of that, it's essentially the same thing as this. Then you know, it's just like what we did before, right? Uh, K n, right? So k is going to be two to the power of four. Yeah, this might be a tricky one. So determinant A to the power of 3. So all you have to do worry about is make sure you find determinant A and just uh, and then you know go follow the, what they did to the power of 3. Negative 2 to the power of 3 is negative 8. The textbook wasn't 100 percent clear about this, so you know, just to be sure, I double check using some like random matrices and it works. So because of that, so I'm pretty sure this is how it works. I wish we could have a concrete proof, but I can't seem to find it at the moment. Hopefully we can find it, but worst case scenario, if you get this on a test, you know what to do now, right? So, yeah, so just, you know, get that into your head somehow. Uh, last question coming up. 
Okay, so last question. So again, similar idea. Actually, it's exactly same as uh, 33. So this would be a good practice if you were a little shaky with uh, question 33, right? So determine A is 7. Size is now 3 by 3. Uh, delta 3A is going to be just 3 times uh, that. So remember that's the equation uh, formula we have. K is the constant. 3. N is 3. Right? Because size is 3. 3 to the power of 3 times the determinant, which is 7. You get that. Determinant a minus to the 1, so that's 1 over delta a, right? Inverse, right? That's just 1 over 7 because delta is 7. Delta 2a, now remember, we guys don't get confused with this, right? So inverse da first, so it's going to be 2k, kn on top, and delta a at the bottom, so 2 to the power of 3, 8, 7, done. Here, the whole thing, so we can't separate them, we have to do both of them together, so it's going to be delta 2a, right? And then 2 is going to be to the power of 3. And then delta A is 7, 1 over 56. So nothing too difficult. Okay, so now that we are finally done with 2.3, we are going to jump into 3.1. And I really hope that I can finish all the way to 3.3. It is getting a late, but uh, hopefully I can make this uh, all work uh, by, by Sunday so that uh, you guys have some time to like browse through and go through some of the kinks here and there before Monday. And, uh, but test is Tuesday. T t test is technically Tuesday, so you should have time. But I'll try to upload these as fast as I can. Okay? I just have a lot of commitments lately. So, But anyways, uh, I will see you back in 3.1.